Hello, 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 everybody. It is Kathy, and I love to be selling. Come on in, sellers. We are going to talk about this works, and I was just testing it. This works, and on several accounts, to increase eBay sales. And the tips that I'm going to be sharing about increasing eBay sales works to keep your sales strong, and it works in multiple categories. Um, it's great, you know, if you're selling clothing or if you're selling toys or puzzles or auto parts to get tips that are specific for your category. Um, but what I really try to work on is to share tips with you that will work across categories and also tips that work whether you are a store owner or not a store owner. And when I give a tip that is specific to an eBay store, for instance, like using your store categories, um, then I, I call that out. So, you know, that, and I do my very, very best to also include a great tip for people that are selling without a store. So come on in, come on in. Those of you that follow me on my Facebook business page, I love to be selling. Thank you. Thank you. I've got well over 4,000 of you now. I certainly appreciate it. Those of you that listen to me on YouTube again, thank you. Thank you. YouTube subscribers, thousands of you subscribing now and downloading my podcast is well over 85,000 downloads. I very, very, very much appreciate it. But let's get to it because I've been noticing um, different Facebook groups and different forums. Um, you know, some people are like, you know, going gangbusters and they're selling, selling, selling. And if you are, congratulations. Um, that's always wonderful to hear. And then other people are frustrated. They'll see an ebb and flow. So the first thing I wanted to say, um, and you have probably experienced this, and if you haven't, sort of keep your eyes out. When you go into a store, so I'm in New York City, if you don't know, um, and I make it a point to get into retail stores um, several times a week just to, to watch shoppers and to see how they're decorated and to look for retail trends that I can share with you. Um, but this is also true in supermarkets and it's true in drugstores. So you'll walk into the store. I'll walk into um, my supermarket. I was actually out picking up some groceries this morning and it's relatively quiet when I go in, you know, and then, you know, as I'm checking out, it's like, wow, where did all the people come from? Like, there's just like a huge uptick. Um, now in New York city, sometimes it's about the subway, like the subway just arrived and people were on the subway and they're using the subway to get to the store. Um, but oftentimes it's just what I call ebb and flow of traffic. Um, I worked for years doing displays and merchandising at stores like uh, Macy's and Crate and Barrel. And I would see that I'd come in and start working and there'd be only a few people browsing. And then within half an hour, 45 minutes, um, there was a big uptick. And it wasn't about people being on lunch break. It's just ebb and flow. Um, there's only a few people there. And then half an hour later, all of a sudden there's 30, 40 people there or 50, 60 people or more. Um, and it happens. It happens in any store, um, anywhere. There's just, you know, cyclical nature to traffic that has nothing to do with people on lunch breaks or dinner breaks or mass transit dumping people. And the same thing can happen for your listings. Just all of a sudden there's a flurry of activity, which is certainly nice. And then it gets very, very quiet and you're like, ah. So the tips I'm going to share is how to keep it more steady. So it's not just you know, this, this up and down, um, which can be challenging. Um, so the first thing to look at, and I was actually looking at this when I was looking um, at, at um, bedding. So I was looking at sheets and towels, and I was looking at some Ralph Lauren, is the first thing, if you've got a listing up, um, and I actually just put some listings up in some new categories, is you got to give it a little time because you want to give it time for the eBay search spiders to crawl it um, and for eBay to feed it to Google. So if you have a new listing up, as, as hard as it is, if you don't see any views, you do need to leave it alone um, at least for a week or two and just sort of give eBay and give Google a chance. Okay. If after it's up for a few weeks and you're still noticing like, wow, I'm really not getting any views on this, then you want to take a look at it. Okay. And the first thing you're going to want to do is you go into, this is not even using Terapeak. So just using advanced search. So you search on eBay um, and you do what's called an advanced search. And actually, let me show you, because I'm going to show you some things with Michael Kors and I might as well do it with Michael Kors. So hang on a second. Uh, here we go. There we go. So what you'll do is if you notice in the upper right hand corner in very small writing, it says advanced. If you click that, you can search sold listings. 
The other thing you can do, this is true on any page. I'm actually going to use Michael Kors and I'm going to show you something here. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see over here, sold items. And the reason you want to click sold items rather than completed items is when you click sold, um, it shows you what's sold. And that's what you want to know. The other thing that's also very helpful is do click completed items because that means they finished and you can see what's sold and what didn't sell. And what I noticed, at least when I was just doing a spot check, like three minutes just glancing at the Ralph Lauren, was that the ones that sold most recently for the best money were fixed price. So that's the first thing to look at is the format. Now, what you are selling, this could be toys, this could be puzzles, um, this could be, um, you know, collectible hats, vintage hats, vintage jewelry, um, it could be sneakers, is every category is different. And many of us are soup to nuts sellers. So we might be really used to handbags or we're really used to sneakers or we're really used to women's clothing or we're used to men's clothing or we're used to auto parts. And then when we branch out, it's different. So what works for women's clothing may not work for men's clothing as far as formatting and pricing and may not work for kids clothing. So you do want to take a look at that. What format sells? Auction, fixed price. The next thing to look at, and this you're going to tell from active listings, and this is active listings I have pulled up, are they using best offer? And I do encourage you, particularly if you're noticing your views are low, if you're not using best offer, I encourage you to do best offer. And you can add it very easily, by the way. You can use bulk edits. So you're going to go to active listings, and you can pull up a bunch of your listings. And if you're doing best offer, this is not about giving things away so that people go, oh, Kathy, you know, I gave it my best price. Increase your price like 10, 15, 20%, whatever you want. And you can do that with bulk edit and then put best offer on it. And the reason to consider best offer is it gets a relationship going with your buyer. Okay. And yes, and this has happened to me too. I have an $80 item and somebody will send me a $10 offer and I'll go, ah. But this is the fun thing. If you counter many, many times, I'm going to say more than half, they come up. It may be another seller looking to flip. Okay. And people do it. They buy on eBay and they flip, right? So they may be doing that. That's fine. As long as I get a fair price, I'm totally fine about selling to you if you want to try and flip my item. Um, but you know, you're encouraging them to come up. So just because somebody sends you an incredibly low ball offer, don't just decline it because then you end the conversation. Counter. I encourage you to always counter. Now, if you do have a category, um, let's say you're in sports car collectibles, and let's say for some reason you're getting a series of low ball offers. This happened to me years ago, and I'm trying to remember what I was selling, and I can't remember. I think it was some things for the kitchen. I was just getting a lot of low ball offers. Um, is then if you want, you can set a minimum that you're willing to take. Okay. So it's not a reserve. It's not a reserve on an auction. It's that you will not um, entertain the offer unless it's at $30, $40. Okay. So you can set that when you set up best offer. You can also, if you want to save yourself some time, you can set auto accept. So we've got these Michael Kors handbags. So let's say, oh, that pretty pink one. So let's say that pretty pink one is $127. Let's say I put best offer on it. Okay. I might be willing to take 110, 105. You can set up auto accept. And that way, if somebody sends you the offer for 105, 110, eBay will auto accept it for you. Bam. You just got a sale. Okay. So list it. If it's up for a while with no views, or you think you should be getting more action, check how it's listed. Now, auctions might be the way to go. So let me tell you, in some categories, auctions absolutely rock. Um, uh, trading cards is one of them, okay? Auctions really rock in trading cards. People will still get in those wonderful bidding frenzies, okay? So don't overlook auctions, okay? Um, again, remember, every category is different. Um, so check your format. Really consider best offer, but don't give it away. I encourage you, again, I encourage you at the beginning, again, because you're trying to get views, you're trying to get action, 
is I would not set up auto decline unless for some reason you really get hit with a frenzy of low, low bids. I mean, low offers. And the other thing, because we all have different lifestyles, if you are a part-time eBay or see if you've got a full-time job and your time is very, very limited, then you might want to set up a certain threshold for your offers because you only have maybe an hour a day to work on your eBay. This was my situation. If you don't know my story, when I first started selling on eBay, I was taking care of my mom who was quite ill. So I only had like an hour, an hour and a half a day to work on my eBay. So something like I probably would have put, you know, like a certain threshold that I accept offers um, and set that up just because of time. I just didn't have a lot of time, um, but I wanted to, I wanted to encourage offers. I wanted offers coming my way. And if you don't know, hi, Vicki, how are you? Um, the other thing, if you don't know this, when you get an offer on an item, so let's say one of these pretty Michael Kors handbags or the shirt or the pen or the water bottle, right? When you get an offer, eBay notices that and it goes to interest on your item, okay? Uh, years ago, I believe it was Hugh Williams, who was the creator of Cassini, which is eBay search. Um, when he created Cassini, the three pillars of eBay search were trust, right? That they're, they're trusting the buyer. They're trusting eBay relevancy that you're the item that they're looking for. So if they're looking for a pink purse, that eBay's not going to show them a pair of black sneakers. Okay. So relevancy, it has to be what they're looking for or in the realm of what they're looking for. So pink purse, they might show them pink wallet. They might show them pink wristlet. You know what I mean? It's because eBay's trying to help them figure out what exactly that they want. And remember that eBay's looking to get the sale. They love you. They love me. They love Vicky. They love Kathy. They want that sale. And whether they're buying from Vicky or Kathy, eBay doesn't really care. They just want the sale. <laughs> so check format. Really consider best offer. Don't get offended by lowball offers. And I know it's really, really hard. And if you want, like in a Google Doc or wherever you like to keep things, you can do like standard replies. Hi, if you come up just a bit you know, this beauty is yours. If you come up another $5, if you want to be specific, tell them what they need to offer you. If you come up $5 or $10, you know, this is yours. Okay. Make it clear in the language that the transactions on eBay, you don't want some kind of bot in eBay to think that you're trying to take the transaction off eBay. Right. So just say, Hey, you know, if you make me an offer, that's a little bit more, you know, this could be yours. Okay. That kind of thing if you're going back and forth with the offer. The other thing is if you do have free shipping on your item, remind them of that. Like, Hey, if you come up just like another $5, this is yours. And don't forget it has free. And I always say U S just in case they're not in the U S okay. Just in case they're in Germany or Italy or someplace is, Hey, if you come up just a bit four or $5, don't forget it includes free uh, USPS uh, shipping. Okay. So take a look at that, which is the format and really look at best offer and using best offer. And again, for my sellers where your time is limited and we're going into holidays, okay? You might have more on your plate right now. You might have more family events going on right now, community events, your sales are much busier right now. Yay, if they are, um, is take a look at, if you're not doing auto accept, I really encourage you. I really see no, and if you do think of a reason not to do auto accept, let me know but I can't think of a reason not to do auto accept because you get the sale right away. There's no reason to go back and forth anymore. Okay. So take a look at that. And as we head into the holiday season and lots and lots and lots of sales for everybody coming their way, because you're looking at your listings and because you're picking the right format and because you're adding best offer, um, and don't forget if you don't have best offer on your items, you can use bulk edit and increase the price because that gives you a little bit of wiggle room is hop over to my website. I love to be selling.com. And when you do, you're going to see the eBay sellers, 12 days of Christmas holiday money making tips. This is completely free. This is my gift to the eBay community. And I have 12 days. So I have 12 tips um, that will make you money. Um, all throughout the holiday season. So do, do, do grab that. And you're welcome to let your eBay seller friends know about that. Okay.
So grab eBay Seller 12 Day of Christmas. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Kathy and I love to be selling. Bye-bye everybody.